So when people say, you can be anything you want to be, no, you can't. I can't be a, a jockey. I can't be the prop for the Irish rugby team or an NFL running back. I can't be a rocket scientist because I can't sit still and study numbers. It's possible when you do your teacher training to become a full-time yoga teacher, if that's what you want, but is it probable? It's interesting what can happen when you change your habits. Last week I had a family bereavement and I went down to Mayo to, to take care of the situation. I was one of the pallbearers, people that carries the coffin. Although it wasn't I, the person that passed away, I wasn't hugely close to them especially in my adulthood, I was still caught up in the, the stress, the emotion of the situation. And I had time to reflect uh, the last week or so on what my purpose is in life. What change do I actually affect? And I think this is a good thing. I think that when you are self-employed, it's so easy to just go, 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 to be constantly thinking, I believe in myself, I am posting on social media, look at me, look at me, I, I matter. But I think it's important to re-examine, to play devil's advocate and in a world where, an online world where we are living in an echo chamber, where any opinion that we have can be reinforced instantly as soon as we turn our phone on, it's important to reassess. So this episode is a little bit controversial because I'm stating a question of why you, I, us people shouldn't be a yoga teacher. Understand that I have a vested interest in people becoming yoga teachers because I now train teachers or I'm involved in that. And yoga, if you're listening to this, you likely practice yoga and yoga's helped you in your life. And therefore you want to share that experience and help people equally, which is really admirable. It's really commendable that you have this noble intention. What I'm saying is not everyone can do everything or anything. So when people say you can be anything you want to be, no, you can't. I can't be a, a jockey. I can't be the prop for the Irish rugby team or an NFL running back. I can't be a rocket scientist because I can't sit still and study numbers. It's possible when you do your teacher training to become a full-time yoga teacher, if that's what you want, but is it probable? How likely is it? And let me get state that I, when I did my 200 hour, most of the people on the course didn't go on to become full-time yoga teachers. And that shouldn't be the sole reason why you do a 200 hour or any yoga teacher training. I think there's huge benefit for doing a teacher training to deepen your practice, deepen your knowledge of yoga. You get to meet people um, that are similar to you and you build really strong bonds when you're with people every month for a whole year or even on an intensive course every day for a month. 
But what I'm saying is don't think I'm unhappy because I have a nine to five. If I leave this nine to five and I become a yoga teacher, then I'll be happy. This is dangerous. This is foolish. Some people think that they do a 200 hour and the yoga jobs will come to them. It doesn't work like that. You have to go out there, as cheesy as it sounds, and make it happen. Let me give you the realities of being a yoga teacher before I do any motivational or this kind of corny motivational talk which I'm trying to stay away from in this episode. There's no sick pay, no holiday pay, no compassionate leave, no insurance, no health care. As I said, I was at a family bereavement last week. I lost a week uh, of earnings. Now, in the grand scheme of things, that's a sacrifice that is it's more important. That life and death are more important than a week's worth of earnings. But if I worked in a nine to five, that wouldn't be the case. I was actually speaking to Lucas Rockwood of The Yoga Body on episode nine of this podcast. And he talked about in... His teacher, when he employs teachers, he's introduced teacher salaries, fixed schedules, maternity leave, vacation days. And now they have some of the most desirable jobs, yoga jobs in Barcelona, which is where he's based. But that's the anomaly. That's a rarity. The reality is, for everyone else, that you are extremely vulnerable when you're a yoga teacher. You have to, you're at the mercy of the studios you work for. Some studios don't even have contracts with you. So you're, it can be very, very unstable. Apart from the logistics of job security, it's worth examining why you want to be a yoga teacher. You could really, really love yoga. But if you start to teach it, you may lose your love for it. Let me explain. Yoga is a very personal thing for most people. You have your own practice that you develop yourself. You have discovered yoga normally through trauma in your life. And to share that with 20, 30, 40 people, day in, day out, is can be extremely uncomfortable because not everyone is going to like you or your yoga practice therefore you risk losing your love for yoga the number one fear people have so i'm told is public speaking You could be the best yoga practitioner ever. Do crazy arm balances, be able to stick your leg behind your head and be an advanced, quote-unquote, yogi. But if you know that you're completely not comfortable with public speaking, you never will be, which is fine. It's very, very unlikely you'll make a career from teaching yoga. You have to face that reality. We all have those moments where we don't want to do our job. That's why it's a job. (laughs) Authenticity is not important. Consistency is important. It doesn't matter how you feel when you're teaching yoga. What matters is how you make the people in your space feel. If you're sitting in a nine to five job in an office and you're at your spreadsheet, you're filling out a spreadsheet, you're feeling a little bit down the dumps, you can plug away, fill out the columns, the rows, get it done, hide hide behind the screen. But with yoga, there's times where I feel anxious about speaking in front of people. I feel that imposter syndrome. And I have that moment of resistance Regardless of that, I put it to a side, put it to one side, and I go out there, and I 
perform. Because it is a performance. People don't like to think that. They like to think, no, I always feel positive. I always want to give 100% and be the best version of me. Well, that's completely unrealistic. It's natural to feel sad sometimes, to feel down. Understand that's where the duty of being a yoga teacher comes in. I've been in classes where I've experienced classes where the teacher comes in and they're an emotional mess. And they they want to share that with the class, their troubles, the fact they didn't sleep the night before or whatever it may be. I don't want to hear it. I'm there as a yoga student and I want the yoga teacher to hold space, to have that command of the room. And this is a skill that is and it is a skill. It's not a personality trait. It's a skill that takes ages to master. Some people have the personality that allows them to master it faster than others. But you don't need to be immediately a good public speaker. You definitely need to want to be a great, if not an exceptional public speaker. So before you even think about leaving your nine to five and becoming a yoga teacher. You need to find your why. My why, why do I do it? Two reasons. The first is I love teaching. I actually love it. I look forward to it. It's the rest of the day that I don't like, <laughs> which I'll talk about in a moment. I love being in front of people, connecting with people. Um, I love that raw energy that I, that I feel. Even if this means I mess up, which I do loads of times. I was teaching that teacher training last week and I completely humiliated myself by forgetting how to teach a pose. Completely humiliated. But in an almost sadistic way, I love that. I love that I've been in that situation as opposed to being behind the screen feeling completely numb like a floating head. So there's the love of teaching. That's the surface level upwards. That's what keeps me going, what I look forward to. But what's at the deepest recesses of my mind that compounds this um, need to do this occupation well is fear. I'm completely frightened that one day soon this could be all over and I have to go back to work in behind the desk for someone else I'm afraid of that because I was never good at that I was always looking for something more and that terrifies me I mean yeah <laughs> but to to be a good teacher to be a good practitioner um, is one thing you can't be a good teacher if you have no one to teach marketing you have to get comfortable with this what does that mean though what does marketing actually mean if you think about when you teach a pose you demonstrate it you explain the features of it the advantages of it the benefits of the pose you're selling that pose you're convincing the yogis on the mat, your students, why they should practice this pose. That same method should be applied to your career. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, you feel social anxiety. We all do. If you don't, you're not human. But you have to do it anyway. A lot of people really struggle with this, particularly with social media, because you can experience faceless criticism but you have to get through this and if you don't you won't you'll end up going back to work for someone else let me talk about the time when you're not teaching it's lonely it is really lonely you don't have a team there is no teamwork towards a greater goal and I think as humans we're naturally driven to work in small groups either against a common adversary 
or for a common goal, for the greater good. That's why when you're working for a company, they'll say, okay, guys, it's Monday morning. This week, this is our targets, our KPIs, and this is what we're looking to do month end and quarter end and all this type of stuff. Kev, this is your role in the company. This is your role, John. You guys are going to work together on this project. Cool, Kev and John, let's go. And although the, the, the goal may be some, it could be argued it's an illusion, it still caters to that innate need we have hardwired within us to work as a team. But when you're a yoga teacher, you are alone. You, there will be other yoga teachers around, but you will hardly ever get a chance to speak to them. You'll be walking into your class as they're walking out of their class. You quickly say, hello, how's it going? That's about the extent of the conversation you'll have. There's no teamwork, really, when you're teaching public classes. I understand that when you work in a nine to five, you have to get out of bed at eight o'clock in the morning. You gotta do it. And you can't leave till five or six in the evening. But if, like me, for example, you teach in the evening times, I've got the whole day to really, I could quite easily do nothing. No one's looking at me. I can, it's, it's very difficult to motivate yourself. It really is when you haven't got someone not telling you what to do. And that's, that's not your fault. We've spent our whole life being told by someone else what to do. That's why schools were invented 150, 200 years ago. Sit people in a row, kids in a row, tell them what to do to get them ready to work into factories and tell them that they need to buy more stuff. So all our life we've been told what to do to pass exams until we go to work in an office and then the school prepares us to work in an office or that bureaucratic environment. So it's understandable that it's that sh what you feel most comfortable doing. But when you're a yoga teacher, you're self-employed, you're a freelancer, every single moment of your day will either help or hinder your future. And every decision is up to you. Social media. This, this, this feeling of loneliness can really be exasperated by social media. So can the need to the need to put across almost like a guru like image oh i'm a vegan oh i practice meditation every day i do this i do that because some people think that if you're a yoga teacher you have all the answers they don't some people don't realize how messed up in the heads every we all are to some degree and understand that people will put these ex expectations on you the same way i suppose if you're a lawyer People expect you to be polished and quick, uh, quick witted. It's not always going to be the case. But let's go, as a yoga teacher, um, people expect you to be wise. So this is a social pressure you're going to realise in class that you. Well, it's up to you whether you want to live up to that or not. I would say for mental health, it's better not to to let people know that you are human, but um, to remain consistent in your teachings. but don't underestimate public speaking. There's no room for social anxiety. I know, I know a phenomenal teacher here in, here in Dublin. This teacher is been, has been doing yoga since they were a child, which is really rare for an Irish person. It's probably different in America or other countries. But they are known also, apart from being a great teacher, for not showing up to class just not turning up no 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 it's just no just don't feel like it today and I completely understand that <laughs> I do it's for that person I imagine the be, being in front of people is the sacrifice they have to make in order to share what they enjoy what they love and I think that's going to be the same the case for a lot of people because we are hardwired 
to not want to uh, expose ourselves in front of a group of people because our brain is designed to keep us alive to survive and if something feels uncomfortable that's normal what's the difficult part is to over oversee that or um, overthrow that and do it anyway it's just lucky for me that i am hardwired i find the yoga teaching yoga therapeutic i go in there sometimes just not wanting to do it but afterwards i feel amazing and i'm just lucky that's why when i sometimes i question am i doing the right job uh, really what do i know but then when i leave class i'm like that's why i do it you have to love the process forget about taking photographs doing videos social media that type of thing do you actually love the process of teaching of learning unlearning relearning and then sharing that with other people this is a really important question to ask it's not the type of job either where you can go through the motions you have to be really creative it's different if you're teaching bikram i know people who are listening to this who do bikram might be offended by this by the way if you're offended by this podcast um, at any stage any episode you should probably ask yourself why you're offended and then maybe just get over it discussing important things is going to cause offense to some degree so let's let's just put that out there if you teach bikram you're saying the same script over and over again yes you still have to public speak but you don't have to be creative necessarily because you're saying the same thing but if you're teaching a vinyasa class a hatha class and in my opinion you want to show that you practice yoga yourself you need to be creative in how you and how you teach and this is something that you have to do every single day two to three times a day depending on how many public classes you teach so ask yourself do you have the capacity to be creative and this creativity isn't just limited to be in the classroom if you think that you can become a yoga teacher just te teach public classes and that'd be hunky dory until the day you die be warned watch out remember what i said earlier about some studios not having contracts even if they do have a contract that can, what does a contract mean you've only got a month's notice anyway You have to think about how do you diversify outside of just public classes? How do you create other revenue streams? Or well, revenue is a real ugly word when it comes to yoga. I know, but this is an occupation. We're talking about a yoga job now. We're not talking about yoga, practicing yoga. So how do you create other ways of making money that don't involve a middleman, middlewoman? For example, are you willing to teach online? Create your own YouTube channel. Are you willing to learn to multitask, to understand video, audio? If you're a one trick pony and you're only used to doing one thing, which is just teaching, you may struggle. Unless you've got loads of money, maybe you've saved up loads of money and you have or you have wealthy parents or spouse who can give you money you can outsource this work web design etc but if you outsource that work then you have to project manage the outsourcers you know making sure they hit the deadlines they understand the request you're giving them specifications it's not just teaching yoga there's so much else involved but just teaching public classes in my opinion is a threat it leaves you vulnerable you're it's not like if people like you or dislike you your biggest threat is obscurity no one knowing who you are and understanding that you have to push through this and 
be your own publicist. Because no one else is going to do it for you and represent you the way that you want to be represented. Understand as well that this never stops. It's not a nine to five Monday to Friday. Because every week, every month, every year, there's more and more 200 hour courses being hosted. There's more and more CBDs coming available. So there's more and more competition for your job. You have to stand out. But how are you going to do this? It takes serious consideration. Here's a couple of things to consider. I'll leave you with this. Are you an exceptional communicator? If not, do you want to be? Do you have a desire to be an exceptional communicator? Are you fascinated by communication? I don't mean... And when I say exceptional communicator, I don't mean... Are you a loud person or how, oh, you have the gift of the gab, you like to talk a lot. That's not a, a good communicator. I mean, can you relate to people on a personal level? Can you at least recognize social, emotional cues from people? And, and do you seek to constantly examine how you make people feel? Because to be a teacher to be a sharer of yoga, because I don't even like the word teacher. You have to be a people person to enjoy being around people, regardless of what the situation is, whether you're giving them a hug because they're happy or because they're sad because they're crying. To me, that makes puts you on another level. Ask yourself, second thing to consider, how much money do you need to make per year to sustain your lifestyle and also invest or save? It's okay to earn less if you're willing to spend less. Can you be multidisciplined? Can you learn different skills, as I mentioned earlier, web design, video production, photography, creative writing, maybe even accounting? And if not, can you project manage those, those and outsource them? Now, this isn't an all or nothing, by the way. The compromise is work part-time and be a part-time teacher. Because I know I like to, for me, it wasn't a compromise. I mean, I was never really good at anything else. So, and I found something that I could be potentially good at, i.e. yoga teaching. So it's, to me, it's a no brainer that I want to give this everything. So I decided to go full time because I felt like I could be an exceptional communicator, that I have something different to offer. Do you? You have to ask yourself that. So that's a lot of questions to ask yourself. <laughs> and I think that's a healthy thing to do. If you think you know it all, you should be worried. We don't. No one does. You have to re-examine all thought patterns that you have. And I think to be a great teacher, you need to be an eternal student and study yourself, your thought patterns, so that you can share this with other people and hopefully affect change. It's no big, un big un I mean, it's no small undertaking. I think that changing your career th like this should be considered with great uh, gravitas. But at the same time, if it didn't work out, you could always go back to your office job and say you tried. <laughs> you know, I know I'm being quite um, serious with this, but um, it maybe it's worth a go. Just understand that it isn't for everyone. Not everyone 
can be a yoga teacher. I don't know what's going to happen with me. No one's guaranteed the future. I mean, the way things are going for me, it couldn't be going better. I mean, it's just, if it carries on like this, I'm very confident about my future in, in Shinsha and yoga. But who knows? And this is something that is healthy to remind yourself of. The future is completely unknown. There, only, there, there is only now. So, that's enough for me. I ramble there a little bit. I didn't write anything down. I didn't structure this at all. I just shared my thoughts. I imagine it's not going to be a massively popular episode. I'm um, certainly would rub some people up the wrong way. But you know what? I welcome a bit of um, p poking the box a little bit. I think more of us should do that. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'll do my best to help you. I'm freaking out myself, you know. Maybe you can teach me something as well. Yeah, if you listen to this, if you made it this far, God bless you, whichever God you believe in. If you don't believe in God, thank you for listening anyway. Next week, I've got loads of guests lined up. But this week, I, I didn't. Well, I did have a, actually have a guest, to be honest, but um, they didn't make the time for the call. So I pos postponed them to a later date. So what better time to do a solo one? Yeah, I hope you learnt something from that. I, most of all, I hope it starts a conversation, an honest conversation, about examining what can make us happy and um, looking at every argument from two sides. That's all. Be good to yourself. Chat to you next week. Bye.